And today, ABC News has gone pink across every broadcast, saluting Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the search for a cure. But tonight, we're also asking about prevention, specifically, which women get the least breast cancer and why? ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, brings us the answer. Ask Mao Shur Yu Yin in the Chinese countryside. A perfect example of what can happen if you eliminate breast cancer risks. I have heard of breast cancer, but I don't know anyone who's ever had it. Not in her village or in any village she knows. Rural Chinese women like Mao have the lowest rates in the world. She eats mostly rice and vegetables, little meat, little fat, which lowers her risk. A healthy weight and exercise lower it more. And her nose, her days are filled with exercise. We are working all the time and we sweat every day. That's why we're so healthy. We sweat so much. Add this. Mao had a child before she was 30 and she breastfed. Both protect her from breast cancer. So here's what it looks like to have the lowest risk in the world. But if Chinese women like Mao moved to the United States, studies show that within a generation, her daughters would have the same risk as an American woman, the highest risk in the world. Another population has an intriguing and more mysterious protection. Debbie Dayo Howe has it. It's because she's blind from birth. Be easy, accessible. Why would that protect against breast cancer? Because no light has ever reached her retina, her sleep hormone melatonin is incredibly regular in its cycle. Not so in women who do overnight work or have a crazy sleep schedule. Some studies link a melatonin level like Debbie's to lower risk of breast cancer. So keeping a regular sleep schedule may protect you. Two populations that raise hope that prevention really is possible, that every woman can lower her risk. And there's another source of hope, a vaccine. Yes, scientists are at work on vaccines against breast cancer. They're being tested here at Walter Reed Medical Center, part of an international trial, giving experimental breast cancer vaccines to women who are already survivors. What have you seen so far? From our early studies, we really observed uh, they cut the recurrence risk in half. In half. It works like any vaccine works, delivering a small protein found in cancers so the immune system can learn to respond to it and kill off cancer cells. If this works, the hope is to eventually come up with a vaccine to prevent breast cancer in the first place. Some people might say a vaccine to prevent cancer is a pipe dream. Do you agree? Uh, no, I think, it's, I think it's within reach. If a vaccine happens, American women could, like Mao, someday be able to say, I've heard of breast cancer, but I don't know anyone who's ever had it. Wouldn't that be a dream? A vaccine within reach? That's when? Right. When? And could it be for everyone? Well, they'll finish enrolling 1,000 women in this trial by the end of the year. And in three years, they'll know whether it prevents breast cancer from coming back. Then the big question from there is, can it prevent breast cancer in the first place? This gives us a lot of hope there. But I want to go back to the two groups of women you showed us and talked about prevention. Yeah. What does this teach us? How radically different is their rate of breast cancer and everyone else's? Well, the, the women in China, it's one-tenth the rate of women in this country. And we can learn from their behaviors. Those are things we can do. That's what pink is all about, learning to prevent, learning from others to reduce breast cancer in women here. All right. Thanks so much, Rich. And we've set up a special website. I know you're there. ABCNewsGoesPink.com with resources and information for Americans with breast cancer. So go there, take the pink pledge, pay tributes to loved ones battling the disease, and start the conversation and join in the conversation about breast cancer.